Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor. That's due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. Know that this gospel broad, lifting up the standard. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is a lesson through the spirit. Uh, it was actually on my spirit uh, yesterday when I was out with the brothers to do the lesson for today. In the spirit, I woke up and I saw a few videos on this particular topic uh, going, going into the woman. But uh, I see that the brothers from Chicago put out some things about the, the, the woman in the West. And then also Elder Apostle Gabar did a lesson 17 hours ago revolving the same topic. And that's the spirit because yesterday uh, we had a sort of semblance of the same spirit because of the environment we was in. You know, and I'm assuming that uh, the brothers from Chicago may, may have gotten the inspiration from Elder Apostle Gabar to say that we're one body, one spirit, one mind, according to 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now, uh, this video is going to be titled, You Women Were Meant to Be Ruled Over, point blank, period. Okay, you women were meant to be ruled over. You, you were not meant to be partners. We were not meant to be, uh, 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 you were not meant to be over the man. You were not meant to be giving orders to men or telling men <clears throat> what you require of them in order for them to be in your life. That's not how this works. See, one thing about the West and Western feminism, Esau has totally fucked you women's heads up. And I was telling the brother that yesterday because we had um, went to a spot. We caught the little game, got some grub, caught the game and stuff like that. And um, I had arrived there uh, before them brothers, probably like 30 minutes before the brothers did. So, you know, I sat at the bar and ordered some food, had a little drink, whatever. So um, I come in there and it was a Edomite John sitting right next. You know, I'm like, is this space open? Is anybody sitting there? And then she said, nah, but at least not now, you know, until my friends get here. And then, you know, I was paying attention to her. I was kind of looking at her and our accountant. She just looked at just through. You know, she must have been like upper 30s, maybe early 40s, maybe mid 30s. Because one thing about Edomite women, they start going downhill. By the age of 30, the Edomite woman looks horrible if she's not taking care of herself or investing in our, you know, in our looks. So, um, I, it's probably like 10, 15 minutes before I said something to her. And then this one uh, young lady came up to me. She works there. And, you know, I've seen her a couple of times. So, you know, I've seen her passing. She always been pretty nice, you know, but she has the rest in bitch face. So she come up to me and then, you know, she just we just started talking. And um, I was asking her, like, you know, just 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 talking shit to her. And she's like, well, I'm tired. I work so much. I'm like, well, why are you working so much? What's your goals? She couldn't really give me a definitive answer. She just said, well, you know, I just, you know, want to just she didn't really. She didn't really have an answer. You know, the typical bullshit. Ah, you know, I want to get money. I want to be cool. Well off. But out of all that desire you have towards your world or towards your life, you're missing the main key ingredient, which is a man. Now, most of these women, they fight against and they war against their nature. And this is the reason why a lot of them are in the predicament they're in. Because yesterday, 85% of that bar was just women with other women. Now, you had, you know, a few simps and stuff like that. Because, you know, sometimes you got people that go out as groups and they know each other and they come sit together. But for the most part, most of the women there, they were single, you know, single. So this is an Edomite chick. She was talking to me and, um, you know, we were just rapping. So she said, well, what do you think I've done as a profession? So I kind of looked at her and I was like, you was probably a cop or some shit. And she said, you're absolutely right. I was a cop. So I'm like, well, why did you change the profession? And she basically stated it just got old. Retrospect. <laughs> It wasn't for because one thing about being a cop and you a female is that these those women they get ran through just like in the military you know they hire female cops to meet quotas and shit like that but ultimately the female cop is that's basically there to get your rocks off just like in the military all right you women think you're gonna go to the military and be lady james bond but yet you find out you just a cum dumpster so she changed her profession and went into like HR for a law firm. Now she left that job, now she's doing something else and she's working full time at this bar. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, back of my mind, I'm like, where your man at? No man, no nothing, no kids, no nothing. Totally miserable, which proves that you women supposed to be with men. But see, Esau tells you 
that you don't have to be a man or you don't need a man. You can do whatever a man does. You know, you get money, you can start your business, you can have your own case of autonomy. <laughs> but then again, you're miserable down the line because you miss that companionship. Because contrary to pop opinion, even though most women say, I don't want kids, it's every woman's desire or should be to, to have a child and to get married. Okay, at least the women that I've known that I've grown up with, that was their whole life's desire was to have children and get married. But Esau has tricked them into believing they don't need that lifestyle. And then 30 years down the line, they're miserable. They totally falling apart, have tons of depression pills in their, in their cabinets where they do have children. The father is not in their life because of the shit the mother did or you just had a loser, you know. So that's just what it is. So second lady, she started talking to me. And then, you know, I was just asking her the same thing. And I'm just like, were you ever married? She said, yeah, she got married at a young age. And I was like, well, yeah, most women desire to be married at a young age. And, you know, she felt that she got married too young. So now I think she's like, maybe like, I think she was like in her early 30s, but she looked like she was in her 40s, you know, kind of overweight. But, you know, you could tell she was well kept together at a point in time. But life, drugs, dealing with multiple men <laughs> took a toll on her. And when I seen it, she just had this, this, just this broken down look in her face. I was just like, damn, is it that bad? You know what I'm saying? So out of all that, you destroyed your marriage. And all of a sudden, now you're sitting at a bar waiting on a group of men to come and hang out with. Like, come on, man. All right. And I'm going to get to some precepts, but I'm just giving, you know, the story. So by the time the brother get there, we get a table. Other brother walked up. So we chill and watching this game. So it was a table right behind us. And it was a couple of women there, Keisha's. And it was like this Northern Kingdom chick. Complete same story. But she was a complete hoe. So we're talking and shit, you know, she's just like, just, just overly promiscuous, you know, trying to put her titties in Jake's face, you know, and I'm just talking shit to her, seeing where her head was at. Bitch is like 41 years old, 42, but you can tell she's been ran through two kids, you know what I'm saying? And I'm talking to her and shit, and I'm like, so what's your deal? She said she's in a situationship. I'm like, well, I don't do situationships. She said, but at least I was honest. I said, yeah, but... I don't do that. I'm like, either you, you know, you this or you that. And the whole thing about it is she was basically telling me she just likes to fuck. You know, she likes to have sex. And I was like, well, and I can kind of peep that on our spirit because she was very promiscuous, you know, but I wasn't really, I was kind of writing her off. So she was kind of intrigued by that. So long story short, I got to ask her. I was like, well, were you ever married? She said, yeah, but she filed for divorce. And I'm like, well, whose fault was it? Of course, she put the blame in his hand, said he was abusive. He was this, he was that. And back of my mind, I'm like, he was probably abusive because, I mean, look at you, you're provocative. And the crazy part about it is, is that she's from Mexico. Okay, she said her mother and father, they stayed together. Her, her father, you know, he was the king of his castle. The mother did everything to support him and blase, blase. But what I realized is when she came to the West, all that shit went out the window. Because I'm like, ain't no way in hell you doing all that for a man and he gonna turn around and beat your ass. I'm like, what happened was you came over here to the West you got corrupted by this whole culture, by this feminism, and that destroyed your marriage. And then your husband was not getting the just do that he thought he was gonna get. That's why the relationship got abusive. This is why he probably started dealing with other women. Okay, so this proves that women, they have to be ruled over. They can't govern themselves clearly. Okay, so Salakia for that. I didn't mean for that to be that long. But um, I looked up the definition of the word woman and uh, we gonna get it here in the book of Genesis the third chapter and I'm going to start at verses let's start at verses uh, uh, 15 is really the point but let's start at verses hmm, yeah let's start at verses 6 because this is really what it starts at and it says here matter of fact I'm going to start at 3 but it says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the power said, ye should not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Now, that goes into the philosophies, okay, the belief systems, these particular structures, like today. Right now, this structure that we're seeing, like I like to say that this particular verse is playing out in full totality today. Because you got to understand that the tension between Jacob and Esau, even though we had tensions among them, since we were, <clears throat> since we came out of the womb, 
But the ultimate prophecy of Esau really showing his hatred towards us was going to be in his rulership when he became the Greeks and the Romans and now the Americans and, you know, Esau's uh, his systems. Now you see the tension of them play out. Okay, so this philosophy is really taking hold in this day because this is the most time in history that women have ever been this out of order. Okay, sure you had women that was out of order in Rome, in Greece. Okay, but that started at the rulership of the Edomites because of the other kingdoms, women was pretty much in order. Okay, they were subjugated to men. You see, even though they did set up queens and uh, particular harems and so forth, and you did have those uh, situations that they did, what they call like polyamory, you had heathens that did engage in those type of rituals, but it was not a very common thing. So this prophecy is really playing out on this side. All right. And it says here, and he says, you should not eat of it, neither should you touch it, lest you should die. Hold up. It says, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the power said, you should not eat of it, neither should you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said it to the woman, you should surely not die. And a serpent <coughs> is basically the spirit of Esau, his devil. Okay, and they call him a serpent because it's cunning-like nature. Prime example, like when you look at like the politics of today, and you look at the legislators of the day, and you looking at Esau's philosophies, it's all subtle. Okay, it says one thing, but it means something else. Like when you read his laws, and when you read like his particular statutes and codes, it's all a bunch of pig Latin that's saying one thing, but it means something else. Like when you go into court and they ask if you understand. You would think that that's talking about comprehension and being literal or, 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 you know, literate. But that's actually talking about if you stand under his jurisdiction and his oath, meaning to have the authority over you to put you in jail. But <laughs> you, but, but it's so subtle because the word understand simply means to comprehend. But that ain't what it mean with this devil, you see. New speak. Okay. And he tripped a lot of people up with that. So feminism has tripped up a lot of these women because if you pay attention to them, I mean, they're, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. But then you see videos like this. What do I do to find a man? Okay. And then when you tell them what to do, cook, clean, be humble, submissive, fit, friendly, you know what I'm saying? Uh, have, a, have a feminine vibe to you, shutting the fuck up, you know, and just doing what the hell that's required of you. You have a problem with that. Well, nah, I can't no man tell me nothing. Nah, I get my own money. No, that ain't how it work, okay? Because majority of you are miserable as hell because you're warring against your nature. Okay, let's just say if a bird that couldn't have a bird that can't fly and his wings is damaged to the point that he can't fly anymore, the bird would just haul off and die somewhere, man. Because it's against his purpose. What can he do? If a bird can't fly, what good is it? He's subjected to all types of predators. You know, he can't get the food that he needs. He can't, you know, he, he can't get the exercise that he needs. So eventually he just roll over and die. Okay. And you women, you were created to be servants to the man. You were created to be servants. You were created to bear our children. You were created to be our help me. Okay. We are not partners. Okay. We are not partners. And if your man so-called loses his job or he falls on hard time, this is when you step the fuck up. Okay, you are the servant, you are an employee, you are an employee of a man. Okay, he uses you for what he needs you for. And I'm not saying misuse you and treat you like shit, especially if you in the right order, but you are the servant to your husband. And this is what a lot of you women in the West do not understand. This is why the divorce rate is 80%. Okay, like I said, all what I talked one, two, three, matter of fact, four women yesterday because I, after I left there. I went to the store to pick up some items and um, I was standing in line and there was this little Jake boy, one year old in a, in, a, in a cart, you know, and he was just looking at me. He was just looking at me. And of course, single mother Keisha, black woman, you know what I'm saying? So I looked at the little boy and I'm like, what's up, man? So <laughs> he put his hand out and he gave me a five. He gave me two. And the black woman face just, uh, oh man, she just looked like, oh my God. Like she just, like she just illuminated because in a spirit, they know that they're supposed to be with a man. So um, I'm like, how old is he? I'm like, he's about one. She said, yeah. And she seemed like she was pretty cool, you know? She was saying like she was pretty dope. So we walking out the store and um, I'm like, so shit, where's the father? Then she got silent for a minute. Then she like, well, nah, we ain't together. I'm like, well, that's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? She kind of put her head down. So she started trying to engage in conversation with me, you know, cause I guess she thought I was gonna ask for a number, but that wasn't the case. 
And she like, well, do you have any kids? And I'm like, yeah, I got a, I got a 14 year old kid. You know, I got a 14 year old daughter. You know, and she's like, oh, yeah, she's older, she's grown, blase, blase. And I'm like, yeah. Then I'm like, oh, well, have a nice day. You know, and you should have seen the shame on her face because usually men that get the attention of women, women automatically expect them to ask for the number or to try to be on something with them. And that crossed my mind, like, yeah, she could be a quick jump off, but at the same time, and I'm just like. I don't even want to even put that type of vibration out there for real. Because I'm like, this woman may seriously need help or need support. And guess what? I'm not going to be the one that's going to do it. So I'm not even finna play them games with her. Keisha got to learn the hard way. So I just walked off and she just kind of walked off and did her own thing. But that's the point. This is four women that I think three of them had kids. Two of them were divorced. Well, you could say three of them were divorced because for the simple fact you had a kid and you ain't with the dude. So... That was three situations right there. You know, all women, all single, miserable as all fucking hell. Okay, so because they don't follow order. But anyway, it says here, uh, and a serpent said it to the woman, you should surely not die. For the power doth know that in that day you eat thereof, then your eyes should be open and you should be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now that's a lowercase God. Okay, because the scriptures say ye are gods, but you should die like men. We're lower level gods. All right. And the woman is not a god, okay? She's not a goddess. She's a wife, a sister, a princess, and a servant, all in one. But on this side, these women are just hoes and sluts. But it says, and when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her and did eat. So she didn't even consult with Adam first, okay? She just did it behind his back because that's how... That's, that's, that's how hard-headed they are, man. Like, you brothers that may have daughters or sisters or mothers or even wives, how many times have you found yourself repeating the same thing more than once? You know, the same thing more than once. Baby, that's too much salt. That's too much salt in the food. That's too much here. That's too much. Don't do that. Don't do... And they still do it. And you can't really follow them because they have to be controlled. But it's one thing, them allowing themselves to be controlled in the right manner. Instead of bucking up against you and defying the authority. All right. Now going down to verses uh, 16, it says, And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and conception. And in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay. Now I look up the word woman, right? Now, of course, we all know the word in Hebrew goes into the word Ayasha, right? So. I looked it up and one thing about this blue letter, see, they changed this blue letter. They changed it a lot because for one thing with the scholars, they realized that we're up on this. So I remember going into the blue letter years ago and seeing total different, different definitions than today. OK, like when you read this, it don't tell you that a woman is a female servant. So you got to go into the etymology root word. But it says a woman, a wife or a female, a wife, woman married to a man, female animal. Or it says, uh, where we at? Yep, that's what it that's what it says. Okay, so what I did was I went to the word woman in Etymon online, which is the etymology root word, and it says an adult female, late old English women, women, literally woman or men, alteration of wife, men. Okay, because what the scriptures say that the most high took. The woman out of our rib, which that's not talking about a literal rib, but you come from the man. All right. It says woman, female servant. OK, that's what the word woman means. It means a female servant. And I don't give a damn what society tells you. I don't give a damn what Esau tells you. I don't give a damn what these books tell you and how they're trying to rewrite and recant history to try to revise it to fit your feminism. The most highest plate, the Bible doesn't change. Or at least the most high doesn't change. Okay, because when you read in the Bible, the scriptures clearly tells you the role of a fucking woman is to be subjected to a man. Not no other way around. And this is why in the West you have situations like this. Woke woman can't find men. Career woman get frustrated. They can't find men who aren't as much as they do. You see the entitlement. See, they've been suckered into this career type shit. And they've been allowed to earn an exceptional amount of money, okay, out of confusion. And the only reason why Esau does that is because he can get one over over the man. See, it's called war. It's, 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 it's the art of war. 
when you learn your enemy and you understand that the woman uh, uh, represents the, 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 the degradation of the nation, they say, if you want to tell how bad a nation is, look at the woman. The women in the West are totally through. So what he did was he gave women higher positions over men to work, to run a house, to give them the benefits. That goes to their head psychologically. Now in their mindset, I'm better than them. I'm better than a man. Like yesterday, all them bitches in that fucking restaurant we was at, all of them, I mean, every single last one of them looked it through. He had a lot of quiches in there. One quiche was mad at us because many of the women that was talking to us were Edomite women and Northern Kingdom women. Keisha didn't like that too much, but what can she do? Because she's not desired. You know what I'm saying? Not desired. Because, I mean, the fucking attitude. Because these same bitches that goes home to nothing, they're total losers, man. They have nothing. They have no money. They barely have a job. And if they do have a job, they're barely keeping it together. They got three or four kids, three different baby fathers, and yet they still walk around with that attitude, I'm better than you. Well, that's fixing to change real soon because I'm going to tell you what, once the lights go out, once the society crashes, once those uh, those hungry thirst trap men <laughs> that come out and they start running your streets, they're going to have their way with a lot of you and a lot of you are going to try to find men in that day and you've already burnt your bridges. Okay, I mean, black women are really losing. I don't give a fuck what the sister code tell you. Most black women, they hang out with other black women and guess what? They don't even like each other. Okay, you got some semantical bullshit called women uh, supporting other women. Yeah, you have to support each other because ain't no man going to support y'all in the shit y'all have done. Okay, Jake is woken up to the black woman, man. Jake ain't dealing with her. And just the Western woman, period. Even the Edomite woman. Okay, because, hey, you be have to get gully with these Edomite hoes too, bro. Okay, I know Jake be pushing you to deal with the other nations, but it's just the woman in the West, period. Keisha is the worst, but all these women in the West, they ain't worth shit. This is why you have a movement called the Passport Brothers, man. Men are going overseas and they're fighting wives, man. Like I was telling the young lady at the bar yesterday, I'm like, well, look. I'm like, men are leaving. And I was telling her, I was like, look, men are leaving because ain't no women over here. The women are trash. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what man is coming from Singapore or the Philippines or Japan or Morocco or what men are coming over here to the United States to find a woman? None of them, man. But men are leaving and going there and finding wives. You know, ain't no man coming over here to find a wife because you're not marriageable. And y'all take pride in it. I don't need no man. Well, it's working against you now because you're going to need men for the time we're getting ready to enter into because it's getting ready to get real, real dark out here. Okay, this shit is going to get out of control and majority of you women are going to die. Okay, right along with your children. Look at this. Why did I leave him? Everything is so hard now. I bet. Why women 40 plus are single? Yep. I want my husband back. It's hard without him. Men don't date us. Yeah, I don't blame him. Shit, men ain't dating no more. Men just like, look, I'm trying to pump and dump. Period. I said it last week in my video, and I meant that shit with every word. Hey, if you deal with one of these women, and they ain't coming to you speaking correctly, hey, Recreational purposes only. For real. I mean, don't get caught up in this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't be putting babies in them. And then you get yourself in the situation that you got to deal with a crazy bitch your whole life. Your brothers got to smarten up, man. You know, smarten up. Be careful. For real. Because it, 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 this ain't the time to be getting caught up in your emotions over these, over these women. The Lord is going to bring us women, righteous women, man. So don't even worry about it, bro. If you find you a little jump off and she cool, then okay, deal. But at the same time, brothers, it ain't that deep, man. Because like I said, these women are fucking liability and they know that. You know, and the ones that can't get with the program, they just going to die anyway. So fret not, brothers. We finna win. All right. But it says uh, a female servant. So that's the definition of a woman. She's a freaking servant. Nothing more, nothing less. And I'm not saying that to be demeaning or anything like that because due to the emotional uh, uh, overload here in this society, everything you say is a trigger word. I what you mean I'm a servant. Bitch, you're a servant. That's what it means. Okay, you're not physically stronger than me. You can't outthink me. You can't outrun me. You can't outbox me. You can't do nothing on a level I can do. Okay, and that's just how it's designed by nature, which shows you 
the Most High doesn't make mistakes. Okay, we're physically superior to you in every way. Yeah, you may can train and do certain things, but at the end of the day, you still ain't go whoop no man. Okay, like I used to be jujitsu, and it'd be women in there training and purple belts and all this shit. In the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I'll beat all you bitches up. All that jujitsu shit y'all take ain't gonna help y'all when the society collapse. Because I wish you would try to take me to the ground and put me in an arm, bro. I'm gonna break your fucking wrist. I'm gonna choke the spirit out your ass, man. That shit don't work in real life if, if you don't know how to implement it. And I'm not saying jujitsu does not work because it does work. But a woman's mind is so, it's, it's so chaotic to the point she can't even pull a move off because she's so, her emotions are all over the place. She just, she'll curl up. Okay, women do that jujitsu shit just to put it on Instagram to show how flexible they are and how good they ass look. Okay, they don't really believe they can do that in real life. It's practical, but you ain't going to have women out here doing jujitsu when uh, the Civil War come. They're going to be hiding under men, you know? <laughs> anyway, this is the book of uh, Ephesians 5, and I'm going to start at verses 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as in the Lord. Now, let's look up the word submit. All right, and I want to kind of get through this so quick. I don't want it to be so long. But it goes into the word hypotasso, right? Now, it says to arrange under, to subordinate. Now, when you look up the word subordinate, right? Lower ranking, secondary, lower ranking position, lower ranking position, lower ranking, uh, uh, lower ranking secondary. So you're in a position under your man, okay? Your man is the CEO and you're his employee. Now, over the house, yeah, you want to be the supervisor over my house that I rule. I put the rules in there and you follow it and then cool. Take care of the kids. You know, you got other women in that ordeal. Yeah, it's going to be a ranking order because even among your wives, you're going to have your favorites. You're going to have the ones that's good in this. You're going to have the ones that's good in that. Like if she's a good seamstress, then you'll have her doing that. She's a good cook. She's going to cook. She's a good babysitter. She's going to babysit. You know what I'm saying? If she's good in this and this and that and she's well-rounded, then that would be your overseer because she's able to delegate authority to the other women. You know, because what I realized with them, they just fascinated with power. As long as I can be the head, bitch, I don't care. Yeah, you can be the head, bitch. But you're going to have the most responsibility. And if you ain't living up to your purpose, then, hey, you're going to get deranked. <laughs> but it says to put in subjection. So you're supposed to be put in subjection. I remember I bought this out to a table of hyenas and they couldn't get with it. And yet all these crows were married. And you got these simple ass husbands right there. Well, I think it means this. I think, look, man, it, 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 it's what it said is. It's straightforward. Okay, there's no putting a spin on what the hell you think it meant. We're reading this, the definition. It says to subject oneself, obey, to submit to one's control. Okay, submit to one's control. Submit to one's control. So if I want my woman to do the fucking, if I want my woman to do a, a particular dance on one leg, Rubbing her nose with a hula hoop around her goddamn waist. She better do that shit. All right? If I say, baby, I want you to cook standing on one foot, barefooted, and a sock on one hand, she's supposed to do that. She got to figure it out. <laughs> because what happens is today, you simps out there, you monkeys, you've given your power away to these lower level people, man. Okay? You are trying to cater to their being. Now, in a fucking conversation, you got to be the charming one. You got to be the funny one. You got to be the one to make all the moves. At the end of the day, when you talk to a female, she's supposed to get a will for your vibe. She's supposed to figure out your personality and she's supposed to charm her way around your personality. If you are not talking to dude and you're a more serious, stern dude, she needs to adapt to that. Like, okay, well, you know, this is the spirit he's in. This is what kind of man I need to revolve myself around that. Okay, but here you got these simple ass niggas trying to be fucking Chris Tucker to entertain a group of bitches. That, that that want different man anyway. And this is the reason why a lot of you go home empty-handed. You know? It's nothing worse than that. You go out and you got a six, seven bitches. You know what I'm saying? They all got this resting bitch face. And then some of them may want to deal. But in order for you to get the one you want, you got to make sure her, her homegirl, her homegirl, her gay friend, you got to make sure you're making them laugh. You got to buy them drinks. You got to be funny. You can't miss a beat. You know what I'm saying? You got to be dressing now. You got you got to be exactly on point. They all got to be feeling you just for you to get one bitch. They ain't nah, bro. We ain't doing that. I'm not entertaining the table. I'm, I don't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? You either get with it or you don't. And you got niggas out here doing that. 
go up to a table full of women and they want to be you fucking clowns. You know, you got seven guys here, seven women there, and y'all all try to talk to seven women to make it an evil thing, an even thing. But instead, six of them are trying to figure out how to get with one guy instead of them just all adapting to these men personality and just being satisfied with having the men. Instead, everybody wants the guy that's tall. Everybody wants the light-skinned dude. Everybody wants the 6'5 dude, the muscles. He's funny. He's charming. He's driving up in the nice cars, you know. And then the other six men are left on the side of the line, broken, self-esteem, fucked all the way up because these bitches don't understand order. Why? They, they, they don't. It just, it's crazy, you know. They have no type of charming. The, the communication skills are totally through. And then you men be sitting back feeling sorry for yourselves, thinking you're the problem. No, they don't know how to communicate, man. You know, like uh, yesterday, the chick before she told me she was in a situation ship or whatever. The thing of it is, she was a little flirty ordeal, but a lot of men like that shit. Because in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a jump off. I mean, you could tell in our younger years she was probably decent. And she wasn't bad looking now, but you could tell like she's been around the block. But the fact that she was engaging in conversation and she was trying to find a way in there, she was actually trying to deal. You know, when she first sat down, she just gave me a look. I'm like, oh, yeah, I already know where this finna go. And then she just started talking and, you know, we going back and forth. She was actually engaging in the conversation, you know, unlike somebody that's just sitting there waiting for you to do a 12 skit opera to just make their dance, sweep them off their feet. Just to, <laughs> for at the end of the day, you try to get the number. Oh, I got a boyfriend. It's like you did all that for what, Jake? It's like, come on, man. It's not even worth it. But anyway, to submit to one's control, use to one ammunition or advice to obey, to subject. So that's what it is. So wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Yahawashai. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahawashai is the head of the church, and he is the savior into the body. So your husband ultimately can be the giver of your salvation because the Lord, he gives it up to the man whether he has mercy on the woman or not. You know, if you have mercy on your woman, then it's because the Lord put it in your spirit to do so, you know, but the Lord ain't dealing with you women. He's not dealing with you. He's not talking to you. He's not, he's not, he's not coming to, he's not supping with you on that level. Now he may give you dreams and you may have a visual understanding to some degree and we're not going to take that away, but the Lord is not dealing with you over the man of the Lord. That's just, that's, that's not how it works. That's out of order. All right. And it says here, therefore, as the church is subject to Yahweh Shai, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So if I say, well, look, I don't like sugar in my grits, don't put sugar in my grits. If I like my big toe rubbed a certain way, then that's how you do it. And that's the problem. Y'all don't want to learn order or etiquette. This is the reason why you are single. And men are telling you exactly why you are in these positions, but you refuse to believe it because it takes away from your so-called uh, your pride and your authority, your so-called authority. Okay. Two more precepts. So lucky this uh, went so long. My sincere apologies, brothers. Uh, Sirach. Fuck, what the fuck, man. Sirach 36 and 24. It says here, he that getteth the wife begetteth the possession. There you go. I ain't nobody possessing. That was written by man. That's 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 a long time ago. Okay, yeah, this was a long time ago. But the key thing is, do God change? See, and this is where people get simple. What do you mean? No, do the most high change? Yeah, yeah, nay. Hmm? Question is no. The Lord said, I change not. So therefore, the sons of Jacob be not consumed. But it reads here. Matter of fact, let's start at verses 21. It says, a woman will receive every man. Yet is one daughter better than another. This is the reason why all of them are single because they don't understand how to choose men. They see a man they're choosing based on the car he drive or the clothes he wear or how he look or his height. Okay, they would never choose them based on the reasoning that he's a, actually a good guy, a good man. Instead, they want some fucking bad boy emotional simp. You know, it's just it's totally it's totally worthless. But it reads here. The beauty of a woman cured the countenance that a man loved none better. Yeah. But if there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in our tongue, then our husband is not like other men. But he that getteth the wife begetteth the possession, a hope like unto himself, a pillar of rest. Okay. So there you go. When the Lord said that he made woman to be a helpmeet, it means a servant. 
okay? Because even if you own a job or if you, let's just say if you own a business and you have employees, isn't your employees there to help you run the business? Okay, if you employ somebody, they ain't on your level, but they still there to help. That's why when you go to those particular, when you go across a lot of jobs, they have a sign in the window said, help wanted. That don't mean you're gonna come in here running the shots or calling the show, you know, or delegating. No, it says help wanted, meaning they're looking for somebody to hire to help them with the load. And that's exactly what this is. There's no fucking partnership. I don't have no partner. Oh, that's my partner. We ain't partners. Okay? You are a help me to me. That's it. Now, if it make you feel better, if you want to believe we're partners, then fine. But we ain't we ain't on the same playing field. You are a help me. You are to submit, subject, and be in subjection and, and to and to learn order. Okay, that's your role. And most women that's in that role, they're happy about that. They have no problem with it because they're fulfilling their purpose. It's less stressful. It's easier. It's like do something that you're designed to do instead of going against the grain. You know, but it says where no hedge is there, the possession is spoiled. The hedge is the protection. And he didn't have no wife would wander up and down morning. And this is why a lot of dudes are leaving. You know, you got men online saying, well, look, man, we want wives, but we don't know how to talk to the women. We can't deal with them. It's always something. It's always stipulations, baby daddy drama. You know, the kid is just out of whack. It's, it's just a shit show, man. You know, shit show. Last precept, 1 Corinthians 11, and I'm going to start at verses uh, 2. It says, but now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinance. Ordinance means laws as I deliver them to you. But I have you to know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. Okay. That's the order. Going down to verses uh, eight, it says, "For the woman is not of the man, but the uh, but the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man." So you were created for us. You are our little plaything, man. Okay, so be happy with it. But anyway, I'm gonna end it. Salakia for the <laughs> going on and on. You know, Jake likes to make points, and sometimes I'm overly long winded. But Lord's will, you were edified until the next lesson. How about you, Mount Shabrak? A thumb, shallow one.